Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you again so much for joining me here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Taking a look here at Doug, seeing what's going on. This is a request from one of my community members here. If I recall correctly, it was Riven. Yes, thank you again for the request. Um, we're just gonna take a quick look at this here. Keep in mind this, this coin does not have a lot of trading data. Oftentimes when you perform technical analysis, it's based on like histories and patterns and there's not a lot of those things established yet. So a lot of this can be taken with a grain of salt, but it's also true to recognize that there are important levels such as trend lines and um, things we wanna kind of identify um, to, that leads to a higher success rate for breakout patterns, et cetera. So we're gonna take a look at that. Uh, we'll take a look at liquidation data too, but keep in mind um, there's no backend liquidation data that I'm aware of unless um, perhaps Glassnode might have that, but high block capital is not available. So we'll look at uh, the, the chart liquidation data, which is still very relevant and very helpful. Okay, so again, we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at a few things here. If you're new to the channel, welcome on board. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment below if you get a chance, absolutely appreciate that. Things we wanna look at first in general, in most cases, and this is gonna be, going be very restrictive. We generally looked at the daily time frame and see kind of where we're at. Now again, all the RSIs, and money flow index, all these things are gonna be irrelevant at this point because the daily, daily candlesticks are, we don't have enough of them yet. But we can kind of summarize here that we're seeing some daily candlestick closures that might be indicative. And if you look here, this is a hammer down, basically a dra uh, not a dragonfly, the opposite, essentially a gravestone doji, implying further downside would make sense because in this 24 hour period so far, we've seen the price shoot up and come back down lower than it opened. And that's generally a bad sign, okay? So that's kind of where we're at there. But keep in mind, it's also a manipulated market and a unique market too with this weekend and everything. If you look, yesterday we had a hammer doji candle. That's generally a bullish sign. So there's, <laughs> there's some conflict there, I guess, depending on how you look at it conflict, whatever. Um, the key takeaway here is a four-hour time frame is gonna give us a little bit better data. We look at the four-hour time frame, we can recognize that we have um, somewhat of a you know descending trend line that's running concurrent now with the 20 day SMA, that's very standard. We have no other SMAs yet based on limited data, but we do look here at the RSI, we're under 50. We have been ever since we've broken below this previous type of uh, breakout. Again, this is generally construed as a bullish sign when the price shoots up, work itself into a kind of a, a pennant. But again, broke down mainly because the rest of the market is trash. Okay? It's easy to kind of summarize it like that right now. Uh, the um, MACD is not gonna give us any kind of information here. And if we just kind of look at this here as well, stochastics kind of topping out, I think it was more propensity for the price to continue a little bit lower. At the very least, maybe retest this 0.786 FIB level and essentially maybe bounce off this level. We could see a double bottom here forming, right? Again, still too early to tell. Hourly time frame is gonna give us probably the best information here. This is one of my favorite time frames anyway, so it kind of works out. But to clarify, we got this lower level liquidation here, still present. So the price is more likely to come down here and pivot and bounce. So I'm gonna just loosely here set an alert right at this level, just to get perspective in case the price comes down there, it might be worth taking it long. Um, again, you see somewhat of a triple bottom here too. That could be a little bit more indicative of the price recovering stronger there. We have a strong amount of support there. We do look at the local point of control here. We can also recognize or summarize, it's probably easier to see on the larger time frame that the most amount of volume for this coin so far is, drum roll please, right here at about 12.5. So 12,500, I'm just paraphrasing, I'm not gonna use the, the decimal points there for you, but 12.5 12, is effectively that point of control. So we look here, we kind of zoom in, 12.5, that puts us right here in this range. So we're getting close to that local point of control, telling us that we have a lot of support in that, that area. So. The price pulls back a little bit further. I think it would be a solid consideration to take a long in this area. Okay, again, a lot of that too is based on the fact that we're establishing lower highs still. So don't just blindly jump in here. What would be more appropriate is for the price action to, you know, wait for the price action to get up over here or over here and get into one of these two areas. Okay, again, you wanna, you wanna try to buy in when the price is broken its descending trend line. This is a four hour trend line. The 20 SMA is running concurrent with it. It would be ultimately best to get in there about 13, 1300 or 13K um, as a good point of consideration there. Once again, that would close above the 0.618 FIB level and give us a much better uh, position. Uh, I know it seems weird to want to buy at a higher rate. I get that, especially if you're new to the channel, you're not familiar with watching me. Um, you, can, you need to recognize that confirmation comes when you have broken the, the trend down and established either a horizontal trend line or a vertical trend line or an ascending trend line rather. I talk about that in my trading university. Make sure you watch that if you're part of my Discord future reference that is a little available here to my premium members there. And also make sure you tune into my trade alerts too because I'm giving you um, basically entries on coins I'm looking to take trades with. So those are all available for you. Just newer features, you wanna make sure you're aware of that. To summarize here, in summary, let's look at the Ichimoku Cloud and call it a day because that's generally the thing I like to look at first. 
or more so last before I take a trade, but it's kind of a primary thing. Um, we're underneath the cloud. This kind of reaffirms that until we break above, we're not in a position to want to take a long position. This kind of reaffirms the fact that we probably want to wait for a higher price point before we get confirmation the price is moving in the right direction. The reason why this is relevant is because we see our local high here. That should be the new low. So in a perfect world, the price action does this. And that's where you get in right there. Okay. So again, that is a good, good thing to kind of recognize. Because again, when you're looking at situations like this, you want to understand that, hey, we've confirmed the uptrend at that point, right? Between now and then, you're just kind of shooting into a barrel hoping to, to catch a fish or whatever, right? So again, it's not really the best circumstances. Having said that, though, the lagging span is not free and clear on the conversion lines below the baseline. These are all bearish signs. So there's nothing here letting us know that it's good to take a long position yet. But I'm going to be looking for confirming factors above, at the very least, this 0.618 Fib level within a couple of days from now. I'm not going to want to take a trade right now because it's a holiday weekend and it's generally trashy. Uh, markets on weekends, specifically holiday weekends like this. Okay, so that's where we're at. Hope that made sense. I described that correctly. Um, if you want to continue to request that I cover this coin more consistently, feel free to do so. If we get enough, I'll go ahead and continue to cover it. But future reference, I cover coins that are specifically requested by my community members and then also, of course, my YouTube followers. So uh, unless I get those requests, I'm not going to bother uh, trying to make that because I like to make sure to get you what you want and let me know what you think. Thanks again, folks. Hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.